Are you looking for inspiration on a daily basis? Well, check out Build to Heal Teas. With our inspirational teas, you're sure to find something that will inspire you. Just go to dealtoheelteas.myshopify.com. That's Deal to Heal Teas. Get some inspiration in your situation. Wear inspirational tea and be inspired all day. That's Deal to Heal Teas at Deal to Heal Teas dot my shopify dot com Hi guys, if you're enjoying this podcast, then I know you'll enjoy the Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. I'm your host, Ernest James. And on my podcast, my guests and I discuss topics and ways to help us to heal in every area of our lives. I believe that everyone can and should live a life that is whole, healed, and healthy. And therefore, I'm on a mission to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill. To deal with their problems, heal from the pain, and to fulfill their purpose. So check out our podcast. We're on Google Podcasts, Spotify, or even on Audible. And if you want to watch the podcast, check us out on our YouTube channel at Deal to Heal with E. James Podcast. Until then, see you soon. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast. I am your host, Ernest James, and I believe that the relationship between a father and a daughter is one of the most important relationships in a woman's life. Therefore, our mission is to promote the daddy-daughter relationship by spreading the voices of girl dads to the world and give love and support to our dads and to their daughters. Thank you guys once again for tuning in to the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast. Again, I am your host, Ernest James. If you haven't already, make sure that you listen, like, subscribe, and share. Uh, Subscribe to the podcast on all of our social media platforms, definitely on YouTube, and also to... um, Um, wherever you're you're listening devices is picking up this podcast and so many different platforms. Now, definitely make sure you guys are not only listening, but subscribing. Don't keep it to yourself, but share it with someone else. Also, I'm going to let you guys know how you can win a hundred dollars from the podcast. You can win a hundred dollars from the podcast, but you have to stay until the end to get that information. You have to stay until the end. Also, Again, like I mentioned before, make sure that you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We share a YouTube channel with our partner podcast, The Deal to Heal with E. James podcast. So when you go to YouTube and you look up The Deal to Heal with E. James podcast, that podcast will come up and you will find our podcast, The Girl Dead Discussions podcast, as a podcast and playlist under that channel. So thank you guys very much uh, for checking us out there also. I want you guys to make sure that uh, you guys are checking us out. Again, sharing with everyone, letting people know that we are here. Again, we are the Girl Dad Discussions Podcast. And today, just like any other day, we are blessed with the guests. Today, we have Dr. Carmen McNeil. How are you doing? I am well. So happy to be here with you. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that you're here. First of all, let me say thank you. Uh, for being here, because you could have been doing anything else with anyone else, but you're here with us uh, on our podcast, and I don't take that lightly, so thank you very much for being here. Um, You are only the second daughter that we've had on the podcast, and I was very intrigued, right, when we came, uh, you came across my timeline on uh, Instagram, and you posted something. Uh, you know what? Before we get that far, because I'm about to jump right in. Let me go back. Let me back up. Let me back up. Do me a favor, Dr. Carmen. Introduce yourself uh, <laughs> to my listeners and tell us who you are and what it is that you do. Yes. Thank you so much, Brother Ernest. So I'm a mom 
Um, uh, to an amazing 16 year old son. I'm a wife as well to an amazing husband. And um, I'm also a psychology professor. So in terms of my uh, professional world, that's sort of how I, some of the ways that led me to the topic that we're going to be uh, talking about today. But I'm also very, very clear that I was put on the planet to um, empower girls, to affirm girls so that they grow up into women who love themselves, who set healthy boundaries. And I'm very, very clear that dads are a part of that equation. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Definitely, definitely are. Uh, again, I, I have five sisters, you know, so I was raised up in the house uh, of girls. It's nine of us all together. I had three brothers, um, but definitely the oldest sisters. Um, I'm, I was a fourth child, so I have three older sisters and I have younger sisters, um, but definitely understood the role that my dad played in the lives of my sisters and still does you know, in the lives of uh, not only myself, but also my sisters, uh, which is one of the things that kind of pushed me to, you know, even do this podcast and, and kind of push my mindset all together, even with the the uh, Deal to Heal podcast. Uh, for those who have been following the Deal to Heal podcast, which came first, that came out of me going to Instagram as the friends of fatherless daughters and having a whole conversation around fatherless daughters from a father and from a man's uh, point of view, um, because my only biological child is my daughter. Right. And so that's kind of how that came about. And so I definitely understand the relationship between, you know, how important the father daughter relationship is. Uh, again, that's why I started this, this podcast. So we can have this conversation. So just, uh, as a, as a reflection, of, of yourself, just growing up with your dad, you know, what was that relationship? Or first of all, I don't even let, not let, don't let me assume <laughs> that you grew up with your dad, but tell me a little bit about your upbringing and your relationship with your father. Yes. So I definitely grew up a daddy's girl. I was a daddy's girl. Um, very, very connected to my dad. My dad was very tall. He was six foot four. So, you know, when we were kids, we used to climb up him like he was a tree and he used to throw us up in the air. You know, my dad was also an elected official, a local elected official. So he was very, very socially aware, very politically conscious, um, was just an advocate for standing up for what's right, standing up against systems of, of oppression. So, he that that was him very very big uh very very big presence so i definitely grew up as as a daddy's girl and if if i may i'll just sort of take us into what we're talking about today <laughs> and uh that is that you know even though my dad talked with us about so many different you know things that were happening in society things that were happening internationally you know there was just one thing that now as an adult, I reflect back on um, that he did not talk with me about. And that was as I was beginning to bloom and come into puberty, you know, on into adolescence, we never talked about my changing body. We never talked about the fact that I had started my period. As a matter of fact, I was um, embarrassed and I did not want him, you know, didn't want him to know, um, for lots of reasons in terms of how I was socialized, right. Mm -hmm. To think about, um, the menstrual cycle. So we never talked about that stuff. We didn't have, you know, discussions as far as what to look out for in terms of, you know, uh, my first crush or those romantic, uh, relationships. And so, there was definitely um, a gap there, I would say now in hindsight, you know, look, looking back on it. Um, so in general, yes, love my daddy. I'm still, my dad is now in the world of the ancestors, but I'm still a daddy's girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and just, uh, I guess to stand in, in your dad's defense, um, there's a lot of conversations that we love to have as fathers. But then there are some that just just scare us, right? <laughs> and one of them is the changes, right? So it's like, uh, as a as a father, it's like you want your baby to stay a baby forever, and you know that day is coming when puberty is gonna hit, their body gonna start changing, you know, and then you will see them actually start blossoming into a young woman right in front of your eyes, and the 
although as a father, yes, you do want your daughter to grow up. You do want her to be a lovely, mature woman. But that changing area, like that time part right in there, that is for most fathers like a very scary time. You know what I mean? Um, just growing What's up. The fear? What's the fear? I think the fear is the unknown, right? And which is why I really want to have this conversation. I think the fear is the unknown because um, I don't think fathers are having the conversation, you know, amongst themselves. I don't think fathers are taught you know, what's what. So I know uh, before we started recording, I mentioned to you that I have five sisters, you know, and, you know, let's say a mother and five sisters. So I definitely was in a home where, you know, these cycles were going on, but I never saw any signs of it. You know what I mean? It's like my, I, I know it, it, I know it came up because I remember hearing, you know, my mom and even my grandmother definitely teaching on, you know, this is how you do this. This is how you, you know, uh, clean up yourself and carry yourself. So I do remember hearing the conversations, but they were to my sisters, you know? So as a young man, I wasn't taught it. And then definitely as a, as a father. So I didn't necessarily have it to give my daughter, even though just by experience of being around, I did have the conversation with my daughter, you know, and, and her being my only child. So it definitely, it was easier for us. And she's a daddy girls too. So it was easier for us to have the conversation, which I just kind of went back on again, I had five sisters, you know, and I had a mom. And then by, you know, by that time, me and her mom was together. We had been living together. Well, we're married. So we, of course, we were living together. And so, you know, even when we started dating, it was the question that came up one day. She was like, uh, if I asked you to go to the store and get my personals, would you go? And I'm like, I got five sisters, you know, <laughs> like it don't bother me, you know, but I know that even that part of it is like taboo to some men. Like, no, I'm not going down that aisle. You know, <laughs> like you go around the whole store to, to get past that aisle, you know? So um, just in your, in your, I know you asked me what's the fear. And so just from my point of view, that's the fear. Um, but just in your line of work, as you talk to fathers, what has been maybe some of their other answers that prior like that fear of having a conversation? Yeah. Yeah. So First, I want to talk a little bit about a bigger picture, mm -hmm. and that is that when girls are becoming women and they do experience menarche, menarche is the technical term for their very first period, um, we, in general, there are lots of exceptions, but in general, we are taught to keep it a secret, mm -hmm. right? That's how we're socialized. We are taught that boys and men are not supposed to know about it. They're going to think you're dirty, right? They're going to think you're nasty. So keep it away from them, right? Try to hide it, you know, as best as you can. So that was my teaching. And that's still, you know, I'm, I'm 51. And that's still um, the very common teaching today mm. in, in 20, you know, in this year, 2023, right? So um, that what that does though, is it perpetuates the negative stigma around menstruation and the menstrual cycle. So it keeps that negativity going and it keeps men for the most part, not knowing what the heck is going on, right? Not knowing how to be supportive. So perpetuating the negative stigma really doesn't help anybody because girls and women are walking around with fear of somebody knowing about it. They're anxious. They're, you know, concerned that they may have a leak and what are people going to think of them and da, 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 da. And then men, when they are in, you know, romantic relationships, they're like, oh, shoot, I don't know what to do. I'm going to just stay away for five <laughs> days. I don't know what going on right and so that's not fair to them either right and you know there are a lot of men who do want to know but again it makes it difficult because we women again for the most part have been socialized to now talk about it right so i just applaud those men and you you know who who do want you know to talk about it and be supportive so you know, going back to your question of, you know, why is it, what are some of the fears that dads have, you know, about their daughters, um, you know, blooming and, and blossoming mm -hmm. and becoming a young woman? They're, they're now fearful that she can get pregnant. Boom. That's what it is. Okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. They're afraid, right? They, they're very, very afraid of that. How, how do I teach my daughter how to be discerning with her body? How do I teach her how to be discerning around who she spends time with? Um, how do I teach her that, you know, the first little crush that come along, you know, doesn't mean that you're supposed to engage in certain sexual behaviors, right? right? Like, how do I teach her that? And so because, like you said er earlier, you know, you want your little girl to stay a little girl. <laughs> and we all know that that's not possible, right? And so because a lot of dads are hanging on that that uh, that daddy's girl, right? That uh, daddy's baby girl, little princess mindset, they're not thinking ahead often mm. for preparing her for puberty, adolescence, and womanhood. Right. And so when it arrives, when their period arrives, by the way, when their period comes, they were already starting puberty one or two years prior to that. Mm. So when their period arrives, dads are shocked. <laughs> They're like, oh, Lord, <laughs> you know, it's here. It came. I don't know what to do. Call your mamas, you know, do something. <laughs> and that's what I'm hearing from dads. Yeah, yeah. I know in, in my case, uh, she didn't tell me. Her mom told me, you know, uh, I think I was at work and she called me and told me that, you know, uh, she had started, you know, her, her first cycle or whatever. And so when I came home, uh, I was very uh, cautious, but I did want to address it, you know, and let her know, you know, like you said, it's, it's okay. It's a part of a part of, you know, womanhood is a part of all of our lives you know what i mean yeah. even as as men you know once it starts uh, and once you reach a certain age every woman pretty much that you interact with is is coming you know what i mean so it's a part of all of our lives but i definitely wanted her uh and with her being a, a daddy's girl i definitely wanted her to be comfortable with talking to me about it you know from her point of view comfortable with you know whatever changes that she was going through uh, you know, whether her mom was around or not to answer whatever questions that she had, you know, just to be able to have a conversation. You know, I wanted that door to be open. But I do know that it's a, it's a question that, you know, it's a conversation that most guys, dads are not having with their daughters. It's a, it's a conversation that guys are not having, period. Right. right. Even as adult men, like I said, we talk about, hey, would you go get my personals? And they're like, oh, no. You know what I mean? It's like... And, I'm 47. At 47, like, dude, come on. Did you can't go get the stuff? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like we by then, like we've grown, we grown grown by now. You know what I'm saying? But I think that uh there's still some stigma around it. Um, and so, you know, like I mentioned with this podcast, I really wanted to be informative, you know, to the the fathers and to the daughters, you know, um, that when we listen to this podcast, we're walking away with something. You know, and I I love the the even the fact that you were having this conversation, you know, especially geared towards fathers. And I'm like, oh yeah, we gotta we gotta have you on, you know. So just uh to begin the conversation, you know, with some dads that you may be having this conversation with, what is something that you even start with? It's just like, hey, let let's start here. Yeah, yeah. So first we do a lot of talking around what their fears are, right? So some of the stuff that, that we just talked about, what is their concern? A lot of dads are concerned at the fact that they're not knowledgeable, right? Mm -hmm. So because they don't have the knowledge, they're afraid of saying the wrong thing, which, you know, I respect that, right? So, and it's not their fault that they don't have the information because they haven't been taught it. Right. Right. So it's not, you know, to blame anybody um, at all. It's just sort of, you know, how our society has has been functioning. So we start out with their fears and then we also start out with what is their vision for their daughter? What how would you like her? to experience puberty and adolescence? How would you like her to feel about her body? How would you like her to feel about herself? So we start there, we start with the end in mind, right? Mm -hmm. What do you want for her? How do you, how do you want her to learn about her body? What's, how do you want your role 
um, you know, to impact her. So we do that sort of digging a little bit, a little bit of reflection and envisioning. We start there. Then after they're, you know, clear on a vision, um, I have dads to reflect on their own puberty. And uh, it's been a little while since we were there, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we have a lot of us as, you know, grown folks, we haven't thought about that in a whole lot of years. And yeah. so we're disconnected. So I have dads reflect on their own puberty. What was it like? How did you feel about your changing body? What did you learn? How did you learn? Who was involved? What was said? What wasn't said? Um, you know, reflecting on all of that. Then I have them do a comparison to compare their vision of what they want for their daughter with their experience of puberty. Are there, are there some things that you experienced that you would want your daughter to experience? Are there some things that you would not, you know, mm -hmm. want your daughter to experience? And so then what would need to happen for your vision to manifest, for your vision of your daughter to manifest? So we do that work. And then to, to get the conversation started with their daughters, because like you said, dads are afraid. They, they want to be supportive, but just don't know how. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing that I have them do is to share their vision for their daughter with their daughter and to share their own experience of puberty. That's how you get started. That's how you get started. Do some reflecting first. And so um, a lot of dads, of course, they're scared. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I said, they're scared. They're going to say the wrong thing. But uh, to, to really, really up level fatherhood, which is really what we're talking about, bold action is needed. Dads, mm -hmm. we need you to lean into this instead of leaning back from this. Because there's all kind of studies out there that show that Dads tend to uh, distance themselves when daughters are, you know, blooming, blossoming, becoming a woman. They tend to, to pull back a little bit and girls can feel the distancing, whether it's talked about or not, they can feel the distancing. So what, I, what I'm all about is giving dads the knowledge, giving them the skill, because there's some skill involved mm -hmm. with this communication process, so that they can lean in and use their special daddy mojo yeah. to really, really have these conversations, to uh, build communication, which really helps to foster a father-daughter bond that's going to last a lifetime, right? Yeah. It's going to last a lifetime when you can lean into these taboo topics and demonstrate um, that, yeah, you know, it's difficult to talk about it, but let's do it together. We can do this, yeah. right? It's, it's powerful, Brother Ernest, I'm telling you. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I, I'm just listening to even your approach to it, you know, and the reflecting back on, you know, my experience, you know, and then like you said with the question, like, do you want your daughter to have the experience that you had? And I'm like, definitely not. You know what I mean? Because uh, I grew up, uh, I grew up in the church, right? Uh, PK, you know, and so the whole back then, you know, like I said, my, I remember hearing the conversations geared toward the girls, you know, about how, about the change and, and, and all that. But from the boys perspective, we never got those conversations, right? We mm. never had those conversations. And then where in the time period that I grew up, we didn't even talk about sex. You know what I mean? So it's like, number one, you're going through this, but then we're not talking, you're not talk, taught about, you know, uh, you're not talking about sex. You're not talking about what's really happening with your body. You're not talking about the fact that it's natural. You're not talking about the fact that the urges that you will have is natural urges. You know what I mean? And how not only are you changing, but the people of the opposite sex are changing. So now with your change and their change, you're connecting on a different level now, you know what I mean? To even start having a conversation or having the thoughts of, you know, sex and things like that. And so even with my, with my first um, images, you know, or where I learned about sex from, and you know, those things came from, of course, older teenagers, you know, and, just to be honest, it came from pornographic material, you know? Right. So this is your first experience of what it's supposed to look like or what it's supposed to be and, and how it's supposed to, you know, 
even a- interact with each other, you know? And so that miscommunication and that misinformation already puts you on the wrong path. You know what I mean? And then if you're not having the conversations at home, you know, of not just, you know, your missiles, but about sex, about the opposite sex, about the connections, you know, uh, from a mother or from a father, we just didn't have the conversations, you know? And so I think the fact that even thinking about that is like, okay, I'm definitely want to have the conversation with my daughter. Now I will say I, I did, my daughter's 20 now, right? So it's been a long time since I had this conversation <laughs> with her, but it definitely was an uncomfortable conversation, you know, uh, especially from a father, because it's like, okay, you know, again, you always want your daughter to to stay your princess, you know, and even though you think about, yes, I want my daughter to grow up and to be married and to have me some grandkids, but you don't want to think about the process, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't know, I don't want to talk about nothing you got to do to get it, but bring me some grandbabies, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it definitely was a, um interesting conversation, you know, that we had, but we did have the conversation, and I think that Again, as, as we mentioned before, a lot of times the fathers are not having these conversations uh, because number one, they didn't have it. And then because they don't have the, the knowledge, especially when it comes to how to operate, you know, doing your menstrual and things like that, they can't they can't teach it to their daughters, you know. And right. then we're expecting the moms or our, our sisters or, our, our you know, our mothers to have these conversations. And it's not always had, you know, um, I briefly before we start recording, I was telling you, even though I grew up in a house full of women, you know, I never saw no signs of it, even though I knew, especially as I got older and teenagers, okay, I know that this is something that's going on inside this household, but I didn't see no signs of it, right? And so there was a uh, situation that I had when I was grown, grown adult, you know, married, had my, uh, I think I had my daughter at the time. I think my daughter was born by then. But I had a, a friend spend the night and uh they were traveling. They spent the night, him and his, his girlfriend. Uh probably had been there for a couple of days or whatever. And during this time period, you know, she was going through her own cycle. And I remember walking in, and you know, you're like you walk in the bathroom, and it's just like bam, it's right there. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> you know, what I mean? you know, I'm like, no, there's a procedure for this. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like you said. Uh, on one hand, I definitely understand. Like, men are not supposed to know. I think we we know, but we shouldn't be able to see the evidence of it. You know, especially if you're not in that um, that relationship with that person. Like with my daughter and with my wife, or not necessarily my sisters, but if need be, my sisters. Maybe I would know because maybe they would ask me to go do some, you know what I'm saying? But to some stranger, no, he shouldn't know. You know what I mean? And in this case, we were pretty much strangers. And you know what I'm saying? I ain't get time to get to know you that much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was telling him, I'm like, look, you might have to, you know, you might need to know that or maybe be privy to that information, but I shouldn't know that, you know? And so I was like, so, you know, maybe because of course he was grew up, he grew up the way I did. I said, maybe they didn't have the same upbringing as we did. So you might want to have this conversation with her. You know what I mean? Like, how do you operate? You know, and so I'm just going to say what I know from what I was taught, or should I say from what I learned, uh, I'm going to say I know 100% the process, but this is what I kind of knew, that um, generally um, young ladies or or women usually wear a, a pad anyway. You're like, doing a, even when they're not on, when they, or should I say, when they know they're getting close, they wear a pad anyway, just in case. So if they are, do start. And then when they replace the pad, they take the, this is what I was, I was taught, they take the packaging from the old one, put the used one in there, in that packaging, then wrap that packaging in tissue, right? And then dispose of it. And sometimes you might just put it in another plastic bag and take it directly to the garbage so it's not even in the bathroom garbage. You know, um, in this situation, it wasn't wrapped or nothing. It was just like, bam, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, no, we got to do better than that. You know what I'm saying? But that's how I was taught. So I don't know if you, you know, you may have a more professional or way that it could be taught, but I, I leave the floor to you to, to talk about that because I do want, if we're really going to have this conversation, I do want the fathers to be able to 
have this conversation with their daughters because there are some single fathers who yes. the mother is not around, you know, and they're going to have to have this conversation with their daughter and teach them how, you know, to properly dispose of and care for themselves. So uh, I leave the floor to you to have that part of the conversation. <laughs> sure, thank you. Thank you for sharing your experience. Um, you know, I do want to encourage all dads even though it may be uncomfortable to start saying the word periods, <laughs> to start saying, you know, menstrual cycle, um, to start instead of saying personals, because that's part of that secrecy mm -hmm. part, the, the new word <laughs> or the new term is period care products. That's all it is, right? Period care products, the things that you need to take care of yourself while you're on your period. So I just want to encourage all dads. Well, the dads who are willing to step up to the plate and do this, because I'm very <laughs> clear that there are plenty of dads who do not. They're not going to touch it. And I understand. But for the dads who want to, who would do anything for their daughters, I just want to encourage you all to start using that language, you know, in terminology. So Brother Ernest, what you were essentially talking about is how people who menstruate collect and dispose of their flow. Mm -hmm. okay? That's what we talking that's about. That's why you're the professional, right? I, 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 was, I, was, I was talking in daddy terms. Like that's a... <laughs> <laughs> right. That's what we're talking about here. So, and there are lots of different products that are out there, lots of different choices that people who menstruate have to collect and dispose of their flow. OK, so you mentioned pads. That's what um, most people are probably familiar with. There are lots of different ones out there for different mm -hmm. levels of absorbency, right, for different uh, levels of flow. Um, so we're, you're familiar. A lot of people are familiar with those. There are um, most people are familiar with disposable pads, which is what you were just talking about. Um, there are also, in case this is a shocker, some reusable pads as well, mm. where you wash them um, and then you reuse them the next time you need them. So very familiar with those, right? Mm. Um, but one of the things that I want to stress is how important it is for people who menstruate to have and use products that are organic that do not have chlorine um, in them. A lot of the products out there have bleaching agents um, in them um, and that are body friendly because unfortunately, there are so many products out there that have ingredients that when they are absorbed into the body and they're, you know, the area that they're used are vulva, which is the whole thing between the legs and then the vagina, if you're using a tampon, that goes inside of you. That's a very absorbent area, right? It's a very sensitive area. And so these, you know, horrible ingredients that are being absorbed into the body have been, you know, on the, on the least severe end have been associated with um, allergies, um, allergic reactions, you know, in that area, lots of discomfort, you know, in that area, all the way up to cancers. So, um, it's real. It's very, very um, important for dads who, you know, maybe are single fathers or widowed or what have you, if they are doing the purchasing to get the stuff that's organic. Got to say that hands down. So talked about pads. I want to talk about some other period care products. Um, okay, because I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to plug my ears up, but okay. <laughs> you did good, Brother Ernest. <laughs> <laughs> So I just, I mentioned, so there are products where you absorb the flow that you use outside of the body. And mm -hmm. then there are products that you use inside of the body. So I'm, since I started with the outside talking about pads, I'll just continue with that, right? So we talked about disposable pads. We talked about reusable pads. Well, now on the scene, we have period underwear, okay? Or panties, right? And there is a whole like line of period apparel, right? There's a company out there called Honor Your Flow that, mm. uh, you know, has 
um, uh, leggings and biker shorts. Yes, it's, it's fantastic. Right. Now, I wish that when I was 12 and 13, <laughs> it was a wrap right. because it makes it so much easier. <laughs> so dads need to be aware um, that those period panties are out there again. Get the stuff that's body friendly because there are some out there in the market that are not. So get the stuff that's body friendly. Okay, so that's the stuff for outside of the body. Now we got to talk about how to collect and dispose of the flow mm -hmm. inside the body. So I already mentioned tampons. Lots of people are familiar with those as well. It's basically a lot of cotton. Don't sound all that great, but that's what it is. And the cotton is what's doing the the absorbing. Okay, so. That's that inside the body. But then there are also something called menstrual cups that are inserted in the body. And it's like a little cup, a little silicone cup that collects the flow as well. So this is reusable, right? Whereas tampons, you throw it away, a single use, mm -hmm. right? You dispose of it properly yeah. and throw mm -hmm. that away. And then, but the cups are reusable. So you dispose of your flow in the toilet, clean it out, you reinsert. And so what's nice about the cups is that as opposed to tampons where you, they might need to be changed every couple hours, maybe, and it depends on everybody, right? But for the most part with the menstrual cups, you only need to change them twice a day. So it makes it more convenient because it holds more. Um, very similar to menstrual cups or something called a menstrual disc. Very similar. It's just a different shape. Um, so that's the quick little rundown mm -hmm. on how to collect and dispose of your flow. All right. All right. And that was very uh, informative, <clears throat> very informative. Um, so not only do you talk about it, but you also teach it. Right. And so you have a program that's geared toward teaching dads. Uh, how to have this conversation uh, with with their daughters. So talk to us a little bit about the program and how, you know, they can even find information about that. Yeah. So I have sort of an introduction called the Dad's Puberty Playbook Masterclass. Mm -hmm. And so that is, that's a free 90 minute virtual um, masterclass where we talk about a lot of the things that we talked about now. But what's nice is, that dads have the support of other dads, right? Mm -hmm. It's me leading, <laughs> but you have the support of other dads. And so that is what helps break the ice, frankly, because as you mentioned earlier, a couple of times, you know, grown men, dads are not talking about puberty at all with each other, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so this provides a very safe space no judgment. Come on, dads, let's just do it. Let's just get down and we're going to do it. <laughs> and so that is uh, what, what, what happens in, in my master class. And so the master class is designed to give dads just enough. So we just cover three steps. It gives you just enough to get started having the conversation uh, with your daughter. So you take that 90 minutes, you have what you need to get started. Um, but I definitely want to assert that this is not a one conversation thing, right? Mm -hmm. This is multiple conversations. This is relationship building with your daughter. And so I have a lot of uh, a longer program called the Dad's Game Changer program. And so that is a four month program where I, you have me as your parenting partner side by side coaching you through the process. Uh, really, really how to establish these strong father-daughter bonds that are going to uh, not only survive adolescence, but thrive in adolescence and beyond. Oh, that's, that, that's great. That's great. So uh, one question that I have. So should this, should the program be something that the father or the dad waits until puberty starts? Or should we like, you know what, let me jump, get a head start on it. Like what would you what would be probably the best time to even start having the you know joining the pro, uh, program? Yes, thank you so much for asking this. So in the ideal world, it's better to do it before um, mm -hmm. the daughter is starting puberty. So I'm talking eight, nine, ten years old, and that for a lot of dads that's tough. Like oh lord, I got to start thinking about this already, <laughs> and, and so. The reason that I suggest that, dads, is because 
that's how you start building the foundation of body positivity, mm. right? Speaking positively with her about her body. It starts early on. You know, frankly, when, you know, our kids are one and two years old, we teach them where their head is, where their eyes is, where their nose is, da, 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 right? They know those body parts, but we leaving out some stuff and you can <laughs> definitely be age appropriate, right? And right. how we teach our young people about their bodies. But I suggest starting early because you can then really affirm and plant the seeds of positivity in into her early. Like this is something that you are going to experience. This is something that you can look forward to, right? And really plant it positively. That's why this is such a game changer. So it's a game changer for fatherhood because they're having these conversations. Mm -hmm. And it's a game changer for our daughters as well. It's just absolutely amazing. So I recommend starting early. However, the reality is <laughs> that <laughs> most dads are behind the eight ball. <laughs> They have not prepared. They're shocked. They're stunned. Oh, Lord is here. What do I do? Right? They're, they're in sort of scrambling mode. So, um, so I say, start wherever you at. Come on, let's start having you know these these conversations. And with the game changer program, you have me up to for for up to a month, but you can work through it at your own pace. And I'll, I'm there with you. So for those dads who are like, oh, no, I need all this information now, you can knock it out in a month, you know, within mm -hmm. a month. As long as you are intense about it, you, you can get what you need. But if you want to space it out, then you have me, you know, for, for up to four months. So uh, thank you for asking that question, because I definitely don't want dads to think, you know, my daughter has already started her period. Is it too late? No, not at all. Let's get in there because... Um, like I said earlier, so many studies show that dads and daughters start to pull apart a lot during adolescence. And, and, and that's, that's not what we want, right? right. We want, we want to be stronger during that time. Yeah. We want her coming to you talking about the boy she got a crush on. We don't want her keeping it a secret, you know, or we want her coming to dad talking about, you know, whoever she has a crush on. Right. So, um, so come on, dads, let's do it. Right, right. <laughs> so how, how can they find more information about uh, the product, the programs? Yes, thank you for asking. So I, I have a website. I'm on Instagram at Period of Empowerment. But I really think that, and I know actually, that the best way is to join a community of, of dads and or a community of parents who are like-minded, right? Who are going to be supportive. So we have a private Facebook group for those dads who wants to dignify their daughter's life periods. And so I encourage you to look for me there because that's what the group is called, the Facebook group. So it's Empower Her, um, Parents Dignifying Daughter's Life Periods. And so you get on there, you get me often, lots of training that happens in there. But the biggest thing is the support and the encouragement from other parents. And that's really what parents are needing. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. I'm, I'm writing it down. Empower her. <laughs> I'm definitely writing that down because <clears throat> I want to make sure that I, I share that uh, information. Because like I said, as a, as a girl dad and, and most of my guests and listeners, you know, our girl dads, I definitely want them uh, to have the conversation and be comfortable with it, you know, because again, we do have to start breaking the change, breaking the cycles, the the stigmas around it, you know, because it's, it's natural. And we as dads, we're not we're not scared of nothing else, right? right. You know what I mean? When we present ourselves to our daughters, we're like, hey, I'm Superman. So don't let this be your kryptonite, dads. All right. You're so <laughs> we, right. You gotta and, step and, up to the fate. Yes, you're so right. Say that. I'm so glad you said it because leaning into this is what helps dads keep their superhero status in their daughter's eyes. This is how you're going to stay front and center, trust and believe. This is how, you know, of course, you know, our kids need to know that we people too, we're human, we make mistakes. But this is what's going to keep that superhero status in her eyes and her coming to you for consultation. So we got to lean in instead of falling back. Can't fall back, dads. 
Yeah, yeah. Can't have, can't be afraid of the conversations. We got to have the hard conversations. Again, that's what builds the the relationships, strengthens the relationship. The daddy daughter's relationship should always be your daughter, but she's not always gonna be your baby, right? That's and right. I, I say that even with my daughter now, like she's my baby, but she's not a baby no more. You know. Um. So we definitely want to make sure that we are e equipping fathers. You know, dads, when you guys, you know listen to this podcast i want you to walk away with with something that you can use and this is something definitely we as girl dads as fathers can use so i'm so happy uh that we came across each other i really am yeah uh, <laughs> and i think it's cool to even have this conversation because i know i've never number one i've never had it before and i talk a lot you know what <laughs> i mean so i've never had the conversation before and i definitely haven't had it with other dads i will after this you know, um, but I think it's the information that we definitely need uh, and should have. So, again, yes. thank you for being on. Um, we're going to transition a little bit, right? So we're going to go into the next segment uh, of the podcast, which we call Getting to the Core Segment. So uh, to my listeners, as you guys know, uh, I wrote a book called The Core Four, which is the four core values that every daughter should get uh, from her father. Right. And so I shared that book uh, uh, with you also. Uh, you guys make sure that you guys go to uh, ebooks by ejames.com, which is where you can get all of my ebooks from. But definitely pick up uh, as a father. I think this the book is great for fathers and for daughters, you know. Um, but again, it's called The Core Four, uh, which is the four core values that every daughter uh, should get from her father. So just for those who have not read the book yet, those four. Uh, core values are guidance, affirmation, love and affection, and protection, right? And so, uh, Dr. Carmen, I know you had a chance to to uh, kind of read over it a little bit um, and just give your, I, I won't ask you necessarily which one is the most important to you. I mean, I could ask you that because generally that's what I ask the fathers, like which one is more important to uh, to them to pour into their daughters. Um, so just from a daughter's uh, point of view, I guess, um, what would be probably, what was one of your, if you can point out one of your father's biggest roles that he poured or the, of the values that he poured into you, or even what was a role or what was a value that you may have wanted him to pour into you, you know, that you maybe didn't get. Right. Yes. Thank, first of all, thank you so much for writing the book. I think it's absolutely wonderful. It's a quick read. It's very succinct, but very, very powerful. Um, so thank you so much for, for writing the book. You know, I think that, um, you know, when we were talking about guidance, you were talking about in the book about, you know, how that includes uh, teaching our daughters to set healthy boundaries, right? That's really, really important. And one of the things, so, you know, I, I'm in the world of psychology, right? Mm -hmm. And so I listen to podcasts of a lot of psychologists. And uh, there is this one psychologist, Black woman, and, and she works primarily with women, and Black women. And um, one of the things that she said is that in her work with all women, okay, regardless of ethnicity, most of their challenges stem from unhealthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. that they were not able to set, did not know how to set, when they tried to set, couldn't follow up, you know, on these, these healthy boundaries. And so I think that that's so important. Um, and that's why, you know, I like to connect what you talked about in terms of guidance to this whole puberty, you know, conversation, because this is where they're going to really start to need some guidance, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to have to develop the skill of discernment, right? Because they're going to, they spend less time with us, less physical yeah. time with us. And their world broadens. They're around all their high school friends and, you know, all of that stuff. And so they need that skill um, of discernment. So that guidance is just so important. And when you're when you're doing the guiding dad, dads, you're modeling, right? How to have these difficult conversations like we were talking about before. And you know, if your vision for your daughter when she grows up and she if she decides to get married, you know, you want her, I, I'm assuming, to mm -hmm. be with you know, a partner who affirms her, right? Um, and so you start doing that. You start that discerning part in her when she's very, very young. 
The other uh, core, one of the core values that you talked about in the book that I really appreciated was protection. And so, you know, we always think of, you know, dad as the protector, Mm -hmm. right? Of the physical protector. But I liked how you included creating a safe space for her to voice um, what's happening for her, for her to voice her truth. Because frankly, this is still a male dominated society, right? Um, The things that women tend to be good at frankly, are not valued as much as the things that men tend to be good at. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of girls are still socialized to keep the peace, right? To not, you know, to bite their tongue, to to not rock the boat, right? To make sure everybody good. And as they're doing that, they're often putting their own truth, their own needs, their own desires on the back burner. And that can be problematic. So I love that you talked about creating a safe space for her to voice, you know, what's happening for her. And I think, you know, when it comes to protection, going back to the whole, you know, puberty discussion, you know, dads are, they're fearful because they can't protect her, right? Mm -hmm. From the the wolves in sheep's clothing. They, they, (laughs) They can't protect her. So I would like to uh, to just assert or affirm or suggest that protection includes preparation. It includes preparing her for these different scenarios, you know, that that she's going to walk into. It includes doing some role plays, you know. It includes giving her the language to respond, so that when the thing happens, you know, when she is propositioned for drugs or sex or whatever it is, Mm because she's going to be propositioned um, or alcohol or whatever, she has the language to maintain her integrity and her self-worth. So that is, you know, some of the the values that I think are just so important and appreciate you for writing the book. Thank you. Thank you. And and I I appreciate you saying that. Um, I, I drew off a lot of my experiences, like I said, as a, as a brother, you know, with five sisters, uh, as a father who, <clears throat> as a father, you know, of, of a daughter, you know, and then, um, I don't, I know I didn't mention it to you, but the reason I even how that book came about going all the way back to even how I got into podcasting, um, as the friends of fatherless daughters is I was having a, a, uh, issue. I was having some issues in my marriage at the time. Um, um, with my wife at the time. And one, what I realized one of, at the core of our arguments was really was a difference of upbringing, right? So I was raised in a two parent household with my mom and my dad, and she was raised in a household with just her mom. And I began to think about that. And in my thinking about it, I realized that every woman I've ever talked to was a father of his daughter. And mm. so once I came to that realization, it was like, okay, what can I do to help this community that I'm a, attracted to or they're attracted to me have is going we run into each other and so that's how I became the friends of fatherless daughters um but that being said you know that even played a part you know with my experiences with fatherless daughters of okay number one what did my dad teach my sisters you know what am I teaching my daughter and then having these relationships with these fatherless daughters what is it that they was missing you know that they were they were missing that their fathers didn't put into them. And so all of that kind of went into me, you know, writing the, uh, the, the core four. And, um, I just, I just wanted to be a, a resource, you know, uh, for fathers and definitely for daughters, you know, and even, you know, unfortunately, uh, fatherless daughters who now have daughters who unfortunately a lot of time are fatherless, you know, but these is the things that, you know, to be able to say, this is what I was missing. This is what you should have. You know, and I think I think I mentioned it in the book, uh, but I definitely mentioned it in my conversation with fatherless daughters and talking about fatherless daughters, that even if your father or your daughter's father is not in her life, that doesn't mean she can't have positive role male role models. Right. And so I say, you know, mom, it's, it's up to you to vet and provide positive male role models in her life, you know, um, 
And so, yeah, so I, I, I put a lot of thought into, into it, you know, like I said, it's a short read, but it's a lot of thought that went into it, you know, a lot of uh, information that I tried to draw from to, you know, to have that conversation. So, um, Dr. Carmen, once again, uh, I want to say thank you for being on. Thank you for having this conversation. Uh, definitely one that I haven't had before, uh, <laughs> but I, I love it. I'm glad, I'm glad that we that we had it. I want you to have the last word, right? I want you to have the last word. I let you, um, I want you to leave us the fathers and the daughters, uh, with a message, whatever that message that's, that's on your heart that you want to leave us with, um, and leave us also with your social media information and things like that, where we can definitely follow you and stay in contact with you. So I'll give you a, a couple of seconds to think about that. Um, to my listeners, thank you guys for, again, tuning in to the Girl Dad Discussions podcast. I uh, Also, make sure that you guys are checking us out at our uh, official website, which is the thedealhealfulfill.org. That's dealhealfulfill.org. Again, as you guys know, um, from the Deal to Heal podcast, my mission is to help people to deal, heal, and fulfill, to deal with your problems, to heal from the pain and to fulfill your purpose. And so that is our official website. Also make sure you guys are checking out uh, the eBooks by E. James website, which is where you can find all my eBooks. Um, not only can you find the core for there, but you also can find uh, Males to Men, which is the three steps to uh, manhood for young boys. And there's also um, another one that I'm very proud of, which is Forgiving Me, the four steps to self-forgiveness that is also there. Um, speaking of which, one of the things that I've been blessed to be a part of, uh, which is where uh, the Forgiving Me ebook came from, I've been blessed to be a part of a community uh, called the Forgiveness Mission, and they can be found at forgivethismission.com. And one of the things that we do, we hold free virtual workshops every quarter of the year, um, talking about forgiveness, what it is, what it's not, who it's for. You know, we have a whole conversation around forgiveness and it's free again. And we do it uh, every quarter of the year. So whenever you listen to this, either one just passed or one is coming up, right? So go to forgivenessmission.com to register for that free event uh, that I am a part of. I've been blessed to be a part of. Uh, very happy to be uh, a part of that event. I think I think that is great. Um, so uh, last but not least, I told you guys that I would tell you how you can win $100 from the podcast. So you can win $100 from the podcast by entering our super subscriber contest. What does that mean? First, you have to subscribe to our YouTube page, to our Facebook page, and to our podcast on Spotify. And after you've done those three things, you will text the word WIN, W-I-N, to the number 866 326 That's 866 326 0730 to qualify to win a hundred dollars. The contest is random, so at any time I can pull a name and it's ongoing. So once you're in, you can always win. You don't have to re-up or anything like that. Once you're in, you're always in, you can win a hundred dollars from the podcast. That being said, again, Dr. Carmen, I want to thank you again and again for this conversation because I know I enjoyed it, but I know it's a much needed conversation that uh, girl dads and fathers are just not having. <laughs> but I'm glad that I was able to have the conversation with you. Uh, thank you again for being on. Uh, I want you to have the last word, so the floor is yours. Thank you so much. So, you know, I think, Brother Ernest, that we've really done a great job of really, really bringing home, emphasizing how important it is for dads to lean into the, this important time of development uh, for their daughters. And so what I have found is that there are two primary obstacles that kind of, you know, keep dads from, from leaning in, right? And so one of those obstacles, one of those things that gets in the way is that dads have, have for the most part, never seen or heard of other dads engaging like mm -hmm. this, right? And so because they don't have a model of this type of engagement, you know, it, it makes it difficult, right? And understandably so. So your, as a dad, your perception, your meaning of fatherhood may not include having these types of conversations with your daughters, right? So you may not have a model. So that's one. 
The other obstacle um, that I think that is out there is that dads are not owning their full value as a dad in the life of their daughter. Okay. And I'm really wanting to emphasize dads, how valuable you are to your daughter being, you know, just a fantastic woman who loves herself, right? When she grows up, who can set those healthy boundaries, who can be discerning. And, and because, like I said before, you know, you may not have a model for this, I really, really want to encourage you to join a community where we are modeling it, where um, it is being supported, where you can post that first conversation that you had, tell us how it went, and you can get some pats on the back, get some high virtual high fives. So come on in and join us, you know, in the Facebook group, Empower Her, uh, Parents Dignifying Daughters Life Periods. Come on in so you can have the support so that you can be the full out dad for your baby girl. All right. All right. Can't end the note better than that. To my listeners, thank you guys once again for tuning in to the Girl Dad Discussions podcast, where our mission is to promote the voices of girl dads around the world and also bring support to our dads and their daughters. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, we will see you next week. Be blessed. Thank you.